the internal gear and the compound gear. Two things that often pose a challenge to the hobby machinist or model engineer. Regular spur gears can be cut in a number of ways and it's a straightforward process. But when the teeth are on the inside, it becomes a lot harder. You just can't reach in there with a rotating tool. Internal gears can be cut manually on a milling machine using the broaching technique, but it's a very tedious process. That's how I made this one. Similarly, with compound gears, you can't reach into the corner to cut the teeth on the small gear with any regular gear cutting tool. Compound gears are usually made in two pieces, which I then have to weld, press or glue together. I did experiment with gear skiving, which is a way you can machine both of these types of gears with rotating tools. But it's more complicated than it looks, and the results were far from perfect. What's really needed, instead of a spinny roundy tool, is a pokey in and out type of tool. This is exactly what shapers do. It is possible to cut gears on a regular shaper, but there's also a special type of shaper for cutting gears called a gear shaper. In addition to the linear movement of the ram, which is vertical, it also slowly rotates both the gear blank and cutter together at the correct ratio. The cutter looks like a small pinion, and similar to the way a gear hob works, it can cut any number of teeth on the gear. This is my old milling machine, the head of it at least. When I upgraded to a bigger machine several years ago, I converted my small milling machine into a dedicated CNC machine, and replaced the head with a high-speed milling spindle. The old head has been sitting unused on this shelf ever since. Time to do something with it. I'm going to convert this and a rotary table I've already added a stepper motor to into an automatic gear shaper. This is the spline shaft that rotates the spindle. I'll need to keep this, but I don't need the gears. It's all machined from one piece. That's the head stripped down to the bare casting. Here's my plan for how this is going to work. The cutter will be mounted in the spindle, which will be driven vertically by the normal up and down motion of the quill through its rack and pinion gearing. The gear blank to be cut will be mounted to the rotary table and will turn slowly as the teeth are cut. The cutter also needs to rotate with the gear, but the existing spindle gearing isn't suitable for this. So I'll replace the gears with a worm reduction driven by another stepper motor. This will give precise control over the spindle rotation with minimal backlash. All of this will be mounted on the CNC mill and the motors controlled by the existing drivers. Well, I guess this is never going to be a milling machine again now. The big gear isn't in the way, so I left it alone. 
It also acts as a convenient point to attach the worm wheel. I'll make the worm wheel from this steel plate. I'm going to turn both the worm and the hop to cut the worm wheel from tall steel and harden and temper them. This will be the worm. And this is the hob after I've cut teeth into it. It's not actually identical to the worm. It's slightly larger diameter and has pointier teeth. You'll often see people on YouTube turn a worm, then cut teeth into it and use that same worm to hob the worm wheel. Whilst this works just fine most of the time, it's not strictly the correct way to do it. There should be a small amount of clearance in the root of the teeth of both the worm and the wheel. As with any pair of meshing gears. To ensure smooth and precise running, the hob needs to be a different shape to achieve this. I've covered this type of thing in more detail in my other videos, so I'm not going to dwell on it here. I'm using my electronic gear hobbing attachment and I'm feeding the hob radially into the blank. Now I need to mount the worm shaft to the casting. Two of these brackets will hold the worm shaft on either side. The slotted holes allow for adjustment. To reduce the backlash between the worm and the wheel, I tap the brackets inwards. That's the rotary motion of the spindle sorted. Now I need to create the up and down motion. I have this motor that came from a water pump. It's small and quite powerful. I also have this 20 to 1 reduction gearbox. 
which will give about the right speed. The two in no way fit together. But that's not going to stop me. Next I need a simple linkage to convert the rotary motion into up and down motion of the quill. I'm using a small tapered brass shear pin to connect to the quill feed shaft. This should break first and protect the rack and pinion gears in case of a jam occurring. Now I have everything I need to try and cut my first gear with this setup and deal with any issues that arise. But for that, you'll have to wait for part two.